Jocelyn, and I'm here today to talk about something called ASD, which I have, otherwise known as Autism Spectrum Disorder. I think the best way to talk about how I deal with my autism is to talk with people who know me pretty well. So who I chose to do first is my best friend, Cynthia Lamb. What are we going to talk about today, huh? Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Man, you got this podcast <laughs> thing in the bag. You are so prepared. You know, that's a thing I noticed, that you're just really unprepared for everything. You sort of just wing it all. I like you, you see, I like to be very planned, but you are the complete opposite, and I don't understand. No, I am. It's I just mean, that we plan it in different ways, oh, and I have Oh, a you're a we now. <laughs> we plan it in different ways. <laughs> and I plan my things in different ways. It's just a little less intricate and detailed and all that it's sort of just in your mind yeah but that isn't planning planning is when you write out everything okay, but planning doesn't always have to mean that it can either be organization in different ways like color coordination something that your head is stuck on so it's organized in your head and you have to get all that on a piece of paper but you don't put it onto a piece of paper but i do it on, but i do put a, you drew something on my notebook uh <laughs> And uh, and you do that. <laughs> you will be having a conversation, and then you'll just immediately redirect this, and then go back. You do the same thing, though. No, no not well, nearly I mean, as often. I mean, not nearly as often, but you still do it. I yeah, mean, like that's everyone does that. Okay, sometimes, but look, I think. the thing is, if you go somewhere and just just the topic in general clears off your mind, and I think that we're still talking about the topic, and you come back, and then when I continue the topic. When I get into a conversation, I get into the conversation. <laughs> like, I don't just forget about it. It's still in my head even days later. Oh, no. No. Because, <laughs> well, it can be with certain things. But yeah, that like, makes sense. the book. <laughs> like, the book. The book. You've been reading Delicious Monsters. <laughs> I haven't read that in a while. Or, well, I did the other day. Yesterday. Oh, yeah, that was yesterday. You live your days every other day. I live my days every single day of every single hour of every single minute of every single second. Uh, what do you mean <laughs> by that? Okay, so I can still be stuck on a topic for days on end, but your memory can skip a day. Okay, wow. <laughs> no need to trash on me. Oh, no. <laughs> And you don't <laughs> understand jokes. You don't get humor. Sometimes you'll take what I say literally all the times. <laughs> okay, so echolalia is basically this thing that's actually a part of the brain where they repeat stuff, right? And it can be sounds, it can be phrases, it can be music. And I've noticed that I can repeat things that you say sometimes just throughout the conversation. Yeah. And yeah, you've noticed that too. Yeah, I've noticed that too. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that on purpose. I'm gonna start <laughs> repeating you. Uh, I mean, have you noticed it? Because I have. I know I do it. What was it called? Echo, echo what? Echolalia or e echolalia? Echolalia? Echolalia. It sounds like a type of flower. It does. You know what? I don't think that's real. Hold on. No, I'm gonna do oh. it. Oh, you're gonna Google it. Yes, oh, I am. Now, Uncle Google. Echolalia, echo. meaningless repetition of words just spoken by another person, occurring as a symptom of mental conditions. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing. So something I've noticed that I just can't do, you can just naturally continue off of something like what you just did. I don't know how to describe it. It's just, I'll say something and you'll continue on with the joke or whatever the sentence is, which I cannot do. Wait, what? You don't know how to continue a conversation? I know how to continue a conversation. I just can't initiate one. You initiated this podcast. I can't initiate a conversation without someone responding to me fully. Oh, like you can't just hold a conversation? Like yes. Carry it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just that think it comes. You you do that really Aww. well. Because uh, I'm just naturally awesome. Just like you're naturally autism. And weird sounds. I know I'll make weird sounds in response Ooh. to certain stuff. Yeah, you do that a lot. I also react in squeaks. You'll scare the crap out of me, and I'll just either squeak or make like a loud. <laughs> yeah, you do that a lot too. Yeah, you just friggin' squeak. <laughs> And I'll squeak back, because it's kind of funny. <laughs> you might not know that being absent from school for a day means you miss out on an opportunity to learn. 
You may not know that being constantly absent from school can lead to absenteeism in the workplace and bad work habits. You might not know that even smaller schools like Hillcrest Public School District averages around 599,040 minutes in student absences per semester. You might not know that according to the National Center of Educational Statistics that American public schools have experienced a 10% daily absentee rate in 2023. If you don't know any of these things, maybe you don't know much, so maybe you should stay in school. Don't skip out on your future. think that the next person I would go to would be my mother or my stepfather to talk about my autism, but who I chose was my teacher, Randy Story, to talk about it. We started I've known talking you now you told for me three years about um, how you tended to look at the world a little differently because of, of autism. Well, I wasn't diagnosed until like two years ago. Right, but mm -hmm. you told me you thought you were dealing with that. Yeah. Right, and I mentioned, of course, that my daughter deals with that. So we have that common ground when we're talking about such a thing, mm -hmm. right? So what have I noticed about you in the classroom? Let's see. I notice you ask a lot of questions uh, because you're concerned about making sure you understand completely. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I notice that you, uh, you overthink because you're very literal. I think maybe this is just something you do is, is question things in general. That's just a thing that... that happens. Really? Do you think it happens because of your autism? Well, I mean, I've done a bunch of research with it, and yeah. Because, like, I mean, typically people with autism uh, think inside the box and have a difficult time thinking mm -hmm. outside of it. Right. And I think I have trouble with that sometimes. But see, I see you thinking outside the box sometimes because there are times when you're a very creative person, you just don't realize you're being creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you're, you're involved in a media art and you understand that, and you have an appreciation of the arts. I've seen you you, you draw, mm -hmm. and you color, and things of that nature. I know you struggle sometimes with other people, mm -hmm. because other people don't think like you. Mm -hmm. And, I, I mean, I don't know what that's like. I know I get frustrated if people aren't thinking the same way I'm thinking about something. So When I was little... I'd ask an adult a question, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't explain it properly to me in a certain way. So I guess when someone asks me a question about something, and they don't specify what the question is in the first place, I get confused. I guess it's on both sides. Is that typical of, of what you deal with with autism? Yeah. I see. I've dealt with it for a long time. How do you see yourself in the classroom around others? I, I mean, I notice you're rather quiet most of the time. How, how do you think, how do you think uh, I see you? I think you see me, I mean, definitely differently from everyone else. Okay. Is that meant to be a bad thing or just? No. Okay. Because, I mean, it can be a bad thing with some people. Have you dealt with that kind of thing before? Yeah. In class, in school? Personal life and all that. People give you grief over that? Yeah. Yeah. My daughter struggles with that, too. Mm -hmm. The thing with her is that she doesn't get certain humor. Mm -hmm. She doesn't get certain references and the thing is she's wicked smart and I think you're wicked smart but you're hesitant about being wicked smart in the room but there are times when I feel like you must be the smartest person in the room because you're concentrating on things I'm proud of you when you do that what do you think it's going to be like outside of here outside of school well I'm definitely excited to get out of school okay I'm excited to leave the school I mean it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to adjust to going to college but I mean I got four months to do you that. are going to college then yeah. yeah and what's your focus gonna be well <laughs> now I have two different things I don't know if I want to do one or the other or not because uh I was talking with my therapist one day mm -hmm. and she said that I th that she thinks that I would like being a youth mentor mm -hmm. and I was actually kind of interested in that yeah. But I'm also really interested in agriculture, mm -hmm. so I don't, I don't know which one it's I want to go with. It's a confusing time. How do you think that as as time passes here, some of the thing, other things that you struggle with are going to? I mean, it's definitely going to show a lot more because I'm going to get more stressed out. Right. But I've learned how to manage that stress at least a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Because your your life, you've told me that your life is is going down a certain path, and that's going to be different too. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with a whole lot of things that make you. I hate to use that word different so much, you know. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that make you different, and uh, I just never want you to forget that different also means unique, mm -hmm. one of a kind. One thing, special is something I don't like. Actually, okay. I, I really prefer different. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I've just well, I, heard people I, yeah. say special in... In a negative way? Yeah. Sure. sure. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I mean, people take that word and misuse it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. When I say you're special... You don't mean it in a bad way? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I mean it in a loving way. Yeah. Because I, I, I think you you are a very special person. And I worry about you. I worry about you because you're about to step into a bigger world, and in that bigger world, people are not always going to understand how special and wonderful you can be. And I just don't want that for you. I don't want it for my daughter. I don't want it for anybody, but I don't want it for people I care about mm -hmm. at all. So you're special. I'm going to turn that thing off. <laughs> Until next time, this is Jocelyn Simmons and Cynthia Lamb, and this has been a Screaming Eagles production. 